You look around the city and the city is completely basically enamored with you. Almost like it's a love affair. You go to restaurants, and there's the wine and dine stamp. You talk to fans, and you ask them who they think is gonna win the title, and they're like, Kawhi, not us. Um, it seems like it's a real love affair right now. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And what are your sentiments towards the city of Toronto right now? Talented players, smart players that know how to give him the ball in his spots. And he's a crafty player. He's been here before. And I mean, I feel like that's what makes him uh, who he is. Just to follow up, so when you happen to end up guarding him off the ball, how tricky is it or what are you trying to do to make sure he doesn't fall out of your line of sight or, and that you can kind of follow him to where he's going? Um, I mean, all you could do is just not try to relax, stay locked in on him. Um, um, chase him as hard as you can, um, put a hand up, and, and see what see where it goes from there. And that's pretty much it. Next question in the same aisle. Go ahead. Uh, Stephen Lung, Sportsnet. Kawhi, um, when, like, it seems in game one, Golden State was trapping you, sending hard doubles your way. Uh, did, did, did that bother you at all? And And... Yeah, in the tape, did you find other ways that you can kind of get yourself more free to get your offense going a little bit more? Um, I come into the game just trying to win, you know what I mean? So is, is, if, you, if I have my mindset on just trying to score the ball, yeah, it could be difficult. But uh, I'm trying to make the right play out there. And obviously, if it's two people on me, somebody's open, or I could create a collapse situation. Um, but it's, it's really not about me. Um, if they play defense like that, you know, guys are going to step up and make shots. And, you know, all I could do is um, keep making the right play. And when I do get a free look, make my shots. And, you know, go back on the other end and play defense. And, you know what I mean? It's, it's not about me scoring or trying to get my offense off. Um, it's a whole collective group out there um, playing basketball. Rachel? Hi, Kawhi. Um What's your process between, say, games one and game two in terms of how much film do you watch? Who do you listen to in terms of making adjustments? How do you go through those sections so you can keep going through a series? Uh, I mean, pretty much, you know, do a group group film um, with the whole team. We're listening to the coaches. Uh, also, um, whoever has feedback, me, myself, uh, you know, Kyle, um, you know, whoever, Norm, Freddie, you know, Serge, whoever, whoever has feedback, we're listening and, you know, preparing for the next game and seeing what we could do better collectively. And from from there, just either just try to watch the game myself, uh, see what positions helped us uh, on both ends of the floor and, um, you know, see what didn't work for us and, you know, try to try to make those mistakes better. Is 
there a particular teammate who you said listen from some of the other guys? Is there a particular teammate who's very astute and good at knowing your game and what they see? Uh, I mean, probably out of everybody who I talk to about film the most is Kyle. Um, you know, me and him will watch film or talk to each other, see what we've seen on the floor, um, either for ourselves or uh, positions to make our teammates better. Gary on the right. Kawhi, Gary, Gary Wash from Boston Globe. You have a never get too high, never get too low mentality on the court. Where did you learn that? I mean, it's all, all the way back with the Spurs when you guarded LeBron, you had no emotion, no reaction. You just you just did your job. Where, where did you get that from? Um, I mean, just probably just growing up playing basketball. Um, that's all I could say. And, um, you know, just being in those um, experiences like you, like you name, um, just going through that whole season, just coming right in as a rookie probably helped me just guarding the best player every night. Um, you know, just always wanting to win, you know, learning from the, the great teammates that I had then, from Tim, Tony, and Manu, just seeing how they approach the game, every game, win, lose, uh, missing a shot, game winning shot, uh, making a bad mistake. Uh, I mean, I guess just growing up, just being in these moments before, you know what I mean? Um, if you play in a championship game in high school, you kind of get the same feeling, you know. Um, you know, and I just try to take my experiences into key and just just keep moving forward and just have fun. Like I said, um, it's just basketball at this point, and you know, win, lose, or draw, I'm still gonna be living. Still got a family, and th this is all for fun. When guys talk to you, what do you, do you even respond when guys try to trash talk you? Uh, I mean, it really it doesn't happen too much. You know what I mean? Um, I really can't say it happens. Mark, next row back. Kawhi, Mark Schwartz, ESPN, to follow up on what Gary was asking you. The fact that you don't get too high really kind of puts you on, almost on an island, unlike so many of the star players, not only in the NBA, but in all sports. When they do something great, they go nuts. What is it about you that doesn't make you go nuts when something crazy happens in a game, and how does it help you to stay on that even plane that you do? Um, I don't think everybody does, you know what I mean? I think it's just, uh, you know, um, it's more paid attention to when I do something good, the camera to go to me or see what I'm doing at the exact moment. But, you know, when I watch games from past, from, um, you know, Kobe or, you know, Shaq or Mike, it, they always didn't just go nuts. You know what I mean? They made big shots and sometimes just pump their fists and walk back to the bench. So I just think because I really don't do it a lot, a whole lot like everybody else. But, um, you know, for me, it just, it's just the way I play. I don't know. I mean, until we win the game or it's all done, then, I, you know, I'll, I'll show some emotion, but I want to stay even killed um, while I'm going through it. What do you think the effect is on your opponents, the fact that you don't get all charged up when things happen in a game? I'm not sure. I don't think about what they're thinking. All the way in the back right. Kawhi back here, Eric Smith, Sportsnet. Nick was saying earlier, um, Mark Gasol maybe has had the lowest of the lows in this postseason in his career, even from when a couple of game stretches, but then how big he was in game one. And what has he meant to you, to this team, not only in this postseason, but since coming to Toronto uh, at the deadline? Uh, I mean, he's been great. And, you know, good rim protector. Um, you know, he's been guarding everybody in the post for us. Um, in our first series, uh, um, guarding Vucevic and then guarding Embiid in the second series, he, he did a great job defensively. And, um, you know, just another, you know, smart player on the floor that's been through uh, the ups and downs of the NBA. Um, veteran guy, like I just said, just ready for the moment, really. And, um, you know, him be able to, you know, orchestrate the offense at the top of the key, able to shoot the three, it, it helps everybody. He's just playing, playing well on both ends of the floor. Bruce, last question before Kyle comes up. Bruce Arthur from the Toronto Star. Kawhi, you've talked all the way along about how you want to have fun playing basketball. When you first came here, you said you wanted to win championships and put your names in those record books. 
I mean, you won a title in San Antonio, you were finals MVP, but you've never had kind of this experience as this kind of centerpiece on a team that's come this far. Have you ever had more fun um, playing basketball than you have during this run? Or how does it compare maybe to, to the, the, the enjoyment you've derived from the game over your career? Um, I mean, I, pretty much after my first year, I just pretty much started having fun. Um, you know, when you come in as a rookie, you, you, you're trying to stay in the league. And um, you don't know what the league is about or, you know, if you're going to stick. So, um, you know, pretty much after that, I've pretty much been trying to enjoy the game. I mean, obviously, it's a lot more fun when you're getting plays called for you and, you know, um, you're able to live your childhood dream and being able to, you know, shoot shoot the ball, you know, 20 times a game, the offense is coming towards you um, rather than, um, you know, just being out there doing one job. Um, because, you know, when you first come in, in a, um, as a rookie, unless you like a top 10 player, you're really not going to touch the floor um, a whole lot or get it, the, you know, offense ran through you. So that kind of, you know, throws you off or, well, for me, just like, you know, puts you in a box for somewhat. So you're not, you got to figure out a ways to have fun. And, you know, like I said, being a, being a child, I, I didn't envision myself just being in a box in the NBA. So, you know, once that time comes, you know, I feel like you're just having more fun and you're able to, you know, experience the, the game and grow as a player. You know, either making plays, seeing double teams and finding other guys. Just, you know, it just gets more fun. You're able to do a lot more. So by that division, has it ever been more fun for you than this run with all the stuff you've gotten to do with the, the shots against Philly, the, the Milwaukee series, all of that? Uh, I mean, I feel like I made some big shots in my career before. Um, I mean, obviously not like um, the ones now, but I mean, it's been fun. I, I can't complain about my career. It's, I had a great time, where, um, you know, each step of the way. I love, I, I have fun with my whole journey. Thank you. Thank you, Kwai. Kyle Lowry will be right